Hi guys, it's mum seven of Prompt Squad and I finally got in this video done. I feel like I should probably be playing some kind of fanfare at this point, but I'm gonna leave it. Now, this mum's prompt was design a Pokemon, which was suggested by Emily. So let's see all the amazing entries that we got this month. First we have Nadia who created this mushroom inspired Pokemon. She's got a great video going into this design with a little surprise at the end too, so I definitely recommend going to watch it if you haven't already. What I love about her design is the way that she's pulled from nature. I know a lot of Pokemon draw from real creatures and objects and I think that's why this design works so well. I also really love the ghost type and I really like the creepy vibe and the eyes especially. It just rings my bell. Next we have Kai who showed his like amazing aspirational work ethic again this month by making his Pokemon designs go through all the different evolutionary lines of his completely unique Pokemon. You can really see where his knowledge of figures and how to structure forms have benefited this design and you can imagine how this Pokemon would move and it really gives it a lot more life. I also think they really look like they could be in the new game because they really remind me of Gen 1 fighting type Pokemon which just shows how well designed they are. Emily created her Pokemon Little Yu which was inspired by a pangolin. I really like the colour palette that she chose in her piece because it's all very earthy and it makes the creature feel more realistic than a very saturated palette would have achieved. And it also just makes it easier to read as a natural grass type Pokemon. And I know I'd definitely be picking Little Yu as my starter. She's also the only person to think of putting it on a Pokemon card and I can't believe I missed the opportunity. I'm just still kicking myself about it. Crafty Leagues joined us for the first time this month, so make sure to show them some love. They've really come in all guns blazing with their Pokemon, the Squirat, which seems to combine features from both squirrels and bats into a really cute Pokemon, which I don't think you'd expect with those two animals coming together. I really love the bright colours in this one, and the fact that it's sitting in an actual scene, because you can just imagine stumbling across this little guy out in the forest and, you know, needing to catch it immediately. Now, Emma created her Pokemon by pulling the tiny and animals out as further prompts and then ended up making this really unique flammerfly from it. I really love the bright colours and how she posed her Pokemon. The shading on its body too, it just gives it this really soft appearance. I think she's always really good at adding texture to her pieces without that becoming the sole focus of what your eye is catching. I just think she's got a really good eye for detail and you know I'm a massive fan of this flammerfly if you can't tell. <laughs> And finally, Dave designed a cactus Pokemon who's proper flexing. You know, I'm, I'm a little intimidated to be honest. <laughs> I like to think he's actually pulling his arms back behind his head to show his chest, but it's kind of like those optical illusions when it comes to his arms. <laughs> Either way, he's a hench cactus and I'm not sure how I'm going to follow it, so now I'm really wondering why did I put Dave last in this? <laughs> but what I love about this design is the character behind it. Dave's really gone beyond just an image and given his Pokemon the feeling of a story and some emotion as well, which really pulls me into his design. And that's all the entries for this month's prompt. As always, I just want to say thank you all for taking part and creating such individual and inspired designs. I just, it's unbelievable how much work you guys put into it and I really appreciate it. So now I'm going to show you my mess. <laughs> so I'm just going to preempt myself a little bit. I haven't got any good excuses for not being very present here or in Instagram for the last month. The best excuse that I've got is that I've just been feeling very uninspired lately. Everything's just been feeling proper grey for me and stuff that I normally do without really thinking about seems to just be taking a lot of energy from me so yeah I've just been avoiding it. So what I was drawing from really to create this piece is kind of something different than usual I think and I think it does show or at least it does to me. Either way, I really hope you're going to enjoy it and I thought I needed to mention that feeling to maybe give some context on the thoughts behind this design. When it came to imagining a Pokemon, I knew I wanted to paint a dragon type. The reason being twofold. One, I saw the Sword and Shields promos the other day and I was pretty surprised that the legendary types weren't dragons with it being set in the UK. I felt like that was a given, so these legendary puppies were a little bit of a shock to me. I guess they're kind of cute, but I'm not gonna lie, most of the drive behind this painting is imagining what legendary Pokemon from the UK could have looked like. Plus, I went to Caerphilly Castle recently and they have a massive dragon sculpture inside their castle walls, 
which is really epic. It, you know, it's these big dragons and they breathe out smoke and everything. And they tell this long story. And I'm not going to mangle the names because I can't speak a word of Welsh. But it tells the story of two dragons coming to live at that castle. And I knew I just wanted to paint a dragon after seeing and hearing that story. So, when designing the Pokemon, I try to focus a lot on shapes. Honestly, this is something that I'm already thinking a lot more about anyway, but when you look at a Pokemon, their structures are usually based on very simple shapes, and so I wanted to make sure to mimic that aesthetic with my design too. I also had, at this point, seen that so many of you guys had thought about the evolutions of yours, so I decided I wanted to try that too and incorporate it somehow in this drawing. So I made my character ride the fully evolved dragon and then hold a starter type version too. I thought incorporating a dragon egg into both designs would be kind of a nice way of joining the two creatures together, and also it's just a very nice simple shape, so I could use it as a guide for the rest of the composition and the creature's designs too. Now the dragon was blue in my head because I wanted it to be a water type, because obviously the UK is an island and we're surrounded by water and it's always raining, so I felt like water type dragons would make sense in such a wet country. But as you can see, my colours went mental in this piece, and I think it's because of what I mentioned earlier. I've been feeling really grey and muted, so when I was painting, I think I just went super saturated to try and counteract that feeling. And in some ways, I kind of like that. I think bright colours are a lot harder to use than muted ones, so when a colour palette with them works, I'm always pretty happy. So in general, I was happy about this piece in that respect but oh my god, I hated painting this character. I ended up cutting out so many bad attempts on her face for this video because no one wants to watch a 30 minute video of me undoing on Photoshop over and over again. I think I'm gonna just have to mess about painting digitally a bit after this and just try and get a feel for how I want digital paints to look. And I think I'm only gonna find that out by experimenting because there's so many choices and brush styles and everything that it's almost like there's too much choice and I find it hard to choose. So I kind of want to find what I gel with and see what happens from there. So if you would like to see some of that and maybe hear some of the thoughts behind it or the thought process, you know, make sure you leave a comment below. Tell me you'd like to see it. So yeah, that's my Pokemon. It hasn't got a name because I'm terrible at naming things. I feel like it should have a shell in the name, like Limpet or Clam or I don't know, Cockle. <laughs> but I'm not going to go there. So if you have a good idea, then I'd love to hear it. Now, next month's prompt was suggested by Kai and it's to redraw your old art. Now all you need to do is find an old piece of art that you've done and redraw it in your current style. It could be fun to hear the rough dates and times that you made that old art as well just to see how far you've come. And I won't lie, I'm a little worried about this challenge so I can understand feeling a bit nervous with it, but I'm sure we're all going to be pleasantly surprised by some of the differences that we see and I really hope you'll be able to join in. The deadline's going to be the 29th of July and I should have the video out a few days after. When you finish your piece just make sure to tag it with Prompt Squad and I'll find it and add it to the video and I really can't wait to see what you're all going to come up with for this. Thank you all again for joining in with this month's Prompt Squad. If you do have an idea for a prompt, please comment it down below or on Instagram. And who knows, it might be our next prompt. I mean, it probably definitely will be as I don't have any left after this one. So please give me a prompt. Anyway, I hope you're all doing really well and I hope to see you all very soon.